Yo, yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Afro Wanders. So in this episode, I'm actually gonna be talking about adapting to the Netherlands, but not the Netherlands in general in total, but the housing situation in the Netherlands and what it was like for me moving from the States from, you know, living in a home in the States or apartments in the States my whole life to moving here. Um, things change. When you move to a new country, standards change, regulations change. Just, there are going to be things that you need to adapt to. It's going to have to get used to. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wish that I had something like this when I first came here, just because, you know, there, there are just a lot of uh, small things that you'll see differently. And you'll just wonder to yourself, like, why is it this way? I don't understand. <laughs> and it took me a while to realize it. And once you do, you can figure out how to get the most out of these things. So um yeah i hope that especially if you plan to move here if you're considering it i hope that this helps um because uh yeah I, i've made video i made videos about the actual moving process out of the states to the netherlands and i've made a video about um, actually adapting to the netherlands in general just outside and you know just my arrival and just things that i had to do and get used to I'm not sure if that video will be out by the time this one's out, but uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with no further ado, I'm going to tell you about the crib. Let's get it. So before adapting to things in the real world out in the Netherlands, you know, I got to get used to shit in my own crib. So, uh, for instance, the first things first, when you're coming from the States, everything is just big for no reason. That's what you realize when you go to the rest of the world. Everything's just bigger in the States, a little more wasteful, but more convenient. Um, and that's the same as for when you go to the Netherlands. Everything is just smaller in general, especially like living quarters are much tighter. If you're working with not such a high budget, you'll probably end up not having so much space, but I've seen situations if you leave, get out of the city center, you could end up with a decent amount of space. But in general, for the same price, you're just gonna get less real estate. And that's because the Netherlands is pretty small. So they, um, yeah, they pack it tight. You know, they build upwards, so they try to. So, um, but I'll say, particularly in my situation, my apartment is, a, I mean, it's definitely big, bigger, than one person needs. Um, two people could live here, and uh, I'd say, yeah, it's just it's just uh, plenty of space, I'd say, for myself. So I can't complain about that. But as far as like appliances go, also can't complain, but everything's just much smaller. Like my, for instance, in my kitchen, like my oven is like the size of a microwave back in the States. And I have a microwave, and the microwave's like the size of my oven too, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're just, just not very big. And then you talk about the fridge. My fridge is like half the size of the fridge that I used to have or that I've had growing up. Um, and I'd say for one person, it's also just fine. Like I, I I'd also don't cook. I'm not, I'm no Gordon Ramsay. So, uh, I cook, but just not enough to like ever run out of space. Um, so I'd say like the fridge is pretty small compared to the U S standards. If there were two people living here, I'd say it'd get really tight. We'd have to like actually be pretty efficient. Um, but, you know, it works for me, I can say. And uh, for instance, like my washing machine, it's, it's a washer dryer combo. I think that's in general, people have that um, or they just have a washing machine. So what you'll find pretty common here is that people, a lot of times people won't have dryers. They're just, after they wash their clothes, we will just air it out and just put it on like a drying rack. So just, you know, just a bunch of a uh, bunch of rows that you can kind of throw it on and it'll dry itself. And looking at it, I mean, obviously it's 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 economical, it's environmental and it's efficient and it's effective. It's a lot of ease man. it's a lot of ease. <laughs> and of course, it's effective because, you know, people have been drying, hanging clothes to dry for millennia. You just uh, you forget about that when growing up in the states or in certain places. So um, yeah, I mean honestly, my dryer, the dryer part of my washer dryer combo sucks. So pretty sure I'm going to invest in a drying rack soon. And it's uh, you know I've used it since I've been here. I've used drying racks and it's just, 
it just makes more sense. I mean, environmentally too, and just saving energy, spend less money on it. So I think it's a good way to go. Um, so as far as things being smaller, that's that's the generally what it is. You'll see other things, but that's what it is um, as far as size. But there are other things to get used to too. All right, so other than everything being a little smaller here in the Netherlands than back in the States, another thing I had to get used to, probably the biggest thing were Dutch bathrooms in the homes. And yes, I said bathrooms, plural, because they split them up. So there are two different rooms typically. You'll have the, the room with the toilet in it. It's called the toilet, I'm real French-like, you know? Um, makes sense. And then you'll have another room for you know where you actually wash off you have the shower you got the sinks and you brush your teeth in there and all that good stuff you know sometimes it's all combined into one smaller places but in typically typical dutch houses they'll have them split up into two you know toilet room and the uh, actual bathroom they call it badkamer and uh yeah so that that was probably the it was it was definitely something to get used to because i would always whenever i had to or God forbid the other thing, I'd have to run into, I'd always go into the bathroom. I'd be like, oh, no, there's no toilet. And I'd run across the hall to the toilet. I mean, you know, small inconvenience just for a couple of seconds, but it's just something I had to get used to for like, maybe it took a five days or something. Uh, other than that, uh, the other bathroom quirk I'd say is, all right, if you're squeamish, you can just skip ahead like two minutes, I'd say. <laughs> um, so the toilet design is definitely different than back in the States or really anywhere else I've been, I've traveled to. You know, typical toilets in the States, you'll just have like, it's just a big bowl filled up maybe halfway with water and then you got a hole in the back. And um, it's just different. It's different in the Netherlands. And to, I'll use some euphemisms to kind of lighten the blows so you don't get too squeamish. But you know, I'll just call our human excrements, I'll call it uh, like vitamin water and potatoes. I hope that makes it better, that might make it worse, but let's go. So, so all right, say the Dutch toilet design's a little different. It's um, instead of it just being one big bowl with a hole with a drain in the back, it's like a bowl in the back just sectioned off in the back of the toilet. And then it kind of goes over a little hump and then it goes down a hole in the front. But the bowl is like in the back. So it's, it's sectioned off a little bit. If that doesn't, if it's hard to visualize it, I'll say like, you know, if you, if you let go of your vitamin water, then it just makes like a little a puddle in the back, right? Just a standing puddle pretty much. Uh, and it's not like filled with water already. It's, just, it's usually just like very, very little amount of water in there. If you don't use the toilet for a long time, it dries up too. So when you flush it, you know, water comes down and it pushes, pretty much forces the water over the hump and down the drain. Um, and if you're, you know, if your vitamin water does that, if it makes a standing puddle, imagine what your potatoes do. They just uh, make a pile of spuds. So, <laughs> So anyways, um, that's kind of what happens. And you know, you always got to use a toilet brush afterwards. Just got to do a little cleaning, get used to that. Cause when I went back to the States, I was just, every time I used the bathroom, I was like, got the toilet brush, like, oh, I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> so that's something to adapt to. Um, it's not too crazy, obviously, but it's just something that's there. And you might ask like, yeah, why do they do that? Why would they do that? Because I don't know any other place that does it otherwise. Um, and you know, the Dutch always have their reasons for what they do. And what I found out is that they design it that way because looking at your, your human waste can tell you a lot about your health. I mean, and you know that, you know, from using, uh, you know, from peeing, you can tell that you know if you can tell if you've been drinking a lot of soda or alcohol or if you're just dehydrated it'll come out one way it'll come out clear if you're drinking a lot of water and i mean the same with potatoes you know it's like if i ain't feeling too good then it might come out looking like yams or mashed potatoes <laughs> all right all right for real, though, for real. Um, i'm done talking about that 
<laughs> but um, yeah, that, I mean, that, that was probably the biggest thing that you had to get used to. And uh, for me, at least in the home in the Netherlands, and you know, it makes sense when you actually figure it out why it's done that way. But other than that, there are a few other things that you gotta get used to, or at least that I had to get used to. So another thing that I had to get used to in Dutch homes, in my Dutch home, was the heating and cooling systems here. So they generally, for heating, they use these like external radiators um, and you know, they're just literally just sitting here. You got these knobs that you can turn and it's just not what I was used to back home. Usually you just press some buttons in the thermostat and some heat comes out, but it comes out of some vents. But here the heat actually comes like from right here, like right next to you, these uh, external heaters and they usually have one in each room. Um, you still have to, you know, adjust the thermostat or if you don't have one, I guess you can just turn the knobs and just do it all manually. Um, but it's nice because the rooms that, uh, that I don't spend much time in, I can just, you know, just turn the knob on it, actually turn it off and save some energy, save some heat. So it's a pretty cool system. Um, and they heat up pretty quick and they're very effective, I'd say. And, um, another cool, and it rains a lot here in the Netherlands too. So it's cool because a lot of people just, if they come in to their house or into the office and they're soaked. So they just want to like dry some clothes real quick because they have to put it on soon. They'll just take it off, throw it on top of the radiator. It'll heat up and it's uh, that's pretty cool. So um, other than that, they also, at least in my home and a lot of homes I've seen, uh, you know, with the winter comes uh, not only the cold, but also like very dry air because cold air is just drier in general. And the radiators can also help in drying things out, especially if you turn it up high. So they actually come with these little, uh, at least in my house and a lot of other ones, these vessels, kind of like these little ceramic containers. I guess it can be any material, but these little containers that go next to the radiator. In mine, you actually has a hook and you can hang it onto your radiator. And I didn't know what they were for the longest, honestly. I was just like, what is this thing? It's just this empty container. I didn't realize that they're actually little humidifiers. And you just have to fill it with water and then just hang it on there. And um, and then when you turn the heat on, then it'll evaporate the water into the air, increase the moisture content. And it does, it works wonders, obviously. And you're probably looking at me, a lot of people just like, duh, we've been doing this a whole lot. Like just put a bowl of water next to it. Some people like put out a wet cloth on the radiator and near it. Does the same, has the same effect, but you know, my, my American ass, my dumb ass, I've always uh, just pressed a button on a black box and just been like, humidify and just let the underworld do its magic. That's just what I'm used to. So, you know, and a lot of people, if you're watching this, you might be used to the same thing. Um, or maybe you're not used to it at all. You're just not used to humidifying. You might not need it where you're from, but you come here, you're gonna need some humid humidification because I realized in the winters, I wasn't sick, but I was just waking up with dry throat for no reason. Um, and then, you know, I drink a glass of water and I'm better, but I'd always wake up with a dry throat. And then I noticed like my plants, some of them would just start turning brown in the winter. I'm like, damn, I mean, I feel like it's getting enough light and put them next to the window. You know, I'll try to water them with a good schedule. I wasn't realizing what it was. And then I realized once I started to, um, once I started to put water in these, humidifiers, these little vessels, then that stopped happening. The plants stopped turning brown. They started living again. So like I said, it's probably basic news for you, but, or for, for a lot of people, but I feel like it'll help somebody. If I didn't know, somebody else doesn't know out there. So that was another big thing to get used to. Um, and of course, that's not all. There's some other things that might be a little safety hazard I could tell you about. Oh, before I move on to the potential safety hazard, the cooling system in the Netherlands, um, in homes, obviously this is also, I'm saying generally, and this is for older style homes, you, uh, you don't get much of a cooling system. And that's because like, you know, in like the newly built and the luxury apartments, you'll get some good cooling and heating system in there. But 
for instance, in my place and a lot of places around here, uh, there's just, there's no cooling system or it's very ineffective cooling system. And that's because historically the Netherlands is a, just a cooler place. It's just a little colder and it never gets to extremely high temperatures. Um, but you know, climate change and shit <laughs> got something to say about that. So since I've moved here, they've had their, you know, their highest, their longest heat waves that they've had ever. <laughs> so, and like the highest recorded day, um, highest recorded temperature ever in the Netherlands was actually like two months after I moved here. And the summers, they get pretty hot. I mean, and I talk to people who are from here or just lived here for a while. And yeah, it's getting hotter every year. It's hotter than it's ever been. And even the winters don't get that cold like they used to. Like currently right now it's snowing and it's like, there. everybody's just like, whoa, this hasn't happened in so long. So yeah, the summers, they can actually get up pretty high. Like uh, I think 105 was the highest temperature since I've been here and like, I guess ever recorded. And it's pretty damn hot to not have an effective air conditioning system. So, you know, back in the days when things didn't get so hot, people just open up some windows, maybe put up a fan and they'll get by just fine. But when you're talking about 105, or just like a week of it being in the mid, mid to high 90s, man, shit gets real. <laughs> you literally just soaking, just like, oh my God. At that point, it feels better to be outside. And like my indoor hobby, I have a lot of hobbies right now, just random stuff I do in the house. In the summer, when it gets like that, my hobby is literally just to put a fan six inches away from my face, just like, uh. <laughs> Standing fans are essential, or just a fan in general, they're essential in your home, especially in the summertime in the Netherlands. <laughs> my friend, he had a first date like last summer or something. Yeah, last summer, it was hot. And it, remember, like they got along really well. They were doing their thing. He was like, man, I gotta make a, I gotta make this move. They were chilling on the couch. He was like, hey, you wanna, wanna check out my fan? It's in the room, it's in my bedroom. She was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and it worked, it, she, it responded well. And uh, <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm being completely serious. I hope you're watching this right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so what I'm saying is you need a fan. Now there's also something that you have to get used to in the Netherlands that might come off as a bit of a safety hazard in Dutch homes. And that's their Dutch steps. Yes, uh, they're just designed in a very strange way. So usually there are like in the traditional Dutch homes, old style, they just very narrow steps. So like just enough to get your foot on there. Usually if you have a really big foot, I imagine you gotta go out at an angle or you just don't have all the space. Um, and they're also like usually very steep, like from one step to the next, you're actually like climbing that shit, almost like a ladder. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah, you get the point. And they usually go at like, they're usually pretty windy or they're like just at curling angles for some reason. And then, even the walls around them and the wall and the rail or whatever's around you is usually pretty narrow. And yeah, it just, it just, it just, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And you might ask, why do you do that, Zach? And Zach would say, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so um, apparently they did it that way to save space, as you can imagine. Um, I think back in like the 17th century, they had a uh, population and an economy boom. And back then they didn't really have like, you know, double decker houses or anything. They just had, you know, usually one stories. So um, when they had that boom, they had to start, people started to move to the city center, the more wealthy people, everybody. And they had to start building up instead of out because they're a relatively small country. They don't have a lot of land, not a lot of real estate to work with, especially in the city center. So had to start building up for the first time. And they followed the uh, principles of an old French architect at the time, a famous one. Uh, and that pretty much, because there's a chimney also going up, less space upstairs. Um, so they build the staircase in a way that just maximizes the space that you're gonna have up there, like in the actual room. So the staircase is gonna be as small as possible, just enough to get you up there pretty much. And, um, you know, 
that's just how it was built and that's the way a lot of houses are still today and because it you know they see they can see how that's a safety hazard people have been hurt on it then they you know newly built homes not allowed to be built that way but if you move to the netherlands and you know it's a good chance that you're gonna live in a place like that fortunately my place it's a little it's not like that it's not typical dutch stairs they're wider just normal stairs just linear it's just, just normal stairs which whatever you're used to it's like that but uh i mean most friends places that i go to especially if they live in the city center it's like that like that's what you'll find it's really dutch stairs that's what you'll find and um i usually like trip up the stairs especially if i have a couple drinks <laughs> I'll just i'll knock one time where i'll just have to be like super careful just like oh my god it's just a good combination of bust your ass so you got to be careful um and you might ask damn what if i move to the second floor of a place like that how do i get my stuff up my furniture what do i do um yeah and the dutch have thought of everything of course so they they actually have these little uh like hooks and cables that they actually from the outside of the home on the roof they'll have a cable and a hook that um you can actually let down a rope and like hook to whatever furniture whatever big item that you have and they can like hoist it up and you have, you can like pull it through your window on the second floor which is crazy to watch like if you haven't seen that before you should watch it I've seen it from the outside, I'm just like, what? So that's actually a sight to see, it's pretty amazing. So the Dutch have thought of everything, but you know, they're, um, they're an ever evolving country just like any other, and they're working to fix certain things like that. But right now, I mean, it's a bit of a antique, if you will. It's nice, it's actually, it actually looks cool, but it's just not very fun to walk up or down. But yeah. Dutch stairs, it's a trip. Now, of course, there are probably some little things or some things that I'm forgetting just to mention and to adapt to when you move to a new place in the Netherlands from the US or from wherever you're from. Um, but those are the big ticket items for me. You know, you come here, you might find something different and uh you know that's just part of life you know you gotta adapt to whatever you gotta adapt to it depends where you're coming from um so i know that a lot of the things i said come off as come off as inconveniences or damn i gotta do that damn why, why do they do it like that but i can say that a lot of things that seem like that are inconveniences that seem like inconveniences are just things that you got to adapt to. You're just used to life another way. It doesn't make any way worse than the other or any way better. Um, it's just things that you have to get used to. And, and I love this country. I mean, if you're thinking about moving here, I hope that this video helps. Just, and if you're just thinking about it, you know what I mean? If you're just trying to figure out some place to go next, um, I'm going to tell you that Netherlands is an incredible place to live. It's an incredible place to move to from the States to here. None of these things have in the slightest changed my decision or made me regret or doubt it. Um, if you're thinking about moving to the Netherlands, you should do it because it's for me, it's the best decision I've made in my life <laughs> by far. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful country. Anything that they do find like it's outdated or inefficient, they're, work, they're always working to change it to make the place more effective and efficient for the people living here. Um, yeah and you know if you've moved to a country if you move to a new country if you've moved here or you're thinking about it leave a comment below tell me about what you think about what i said or if you have any things that you feel like um that you had to adapt to or if you have questions about other things definitely just put it below if you're from here and you got something to say put it down below too i love any kind of conversation any kind of dialogue about it so i think that'll help whatever you have to say will help somebody so Put that out there um otherwise i hope y'all enjoyed the video man i mean i really enjoyed making it and you know like i said netherlands is a beautiful place so if you're thinking about coming come through hit your boy up and you know like like the page like the video thumbs up share subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but other than that man hope y'all enjoy hope y'all enjoyed the crib i'm gonna see y'all in the next one all right y'all Peace.